All right, we'll get started. Uh, you know, Greg, thank you very much for taking the time to, um, you know, uh, help with this interview. And, and this is very useful for us, you know, because, uh, you know, we don't see this all the time. And so, so, you know, how did it get started, right? What was the problem that you guys were trying to solve? You know, what was the frustration? You know, how did, uh, you know, uh, what was that you guys were trying to, you know, uh, make better? So, we actually like to take pictures of our outbound shipments so that customers know how they left our facility so that if they show up and they look kind of sketchy, that uh, we can show them a picture and say, look, it, when it left the building, it looked like this. Mm -hmm. It showed up and looks like a pancake, then we need to talk to the carrier, not us. Okay. Now, we actually, we actually had been doing these pictures for mm, about 10 or 12 years. Wow, okay. And the way we were the way we were doing it is we had an application on a workstation mm -hmm. that used an imaging scanner, so an old symbol scanner where you would scan a barcode. We would then switch the mode of the scanner to camera, and then it would take a picture and print out a very dark, very difficult to see uh, black and white on a big dimal label. Yeah. So that worked for a while, mm -hmm. but. You know, it was 10 or 12 years ago, and technology's changed a little bit. So, you know, instead of a two-pixel camera, you now have, you know, these 16-gigabit pixel cameras in your phone. Yeah. So people started asking questions if there was somehow we could upgrade it so we took better pictures and make it mobile. Mm -hmm. So we poked around with the idea of actually writing our own again, as we had done the first time. Yep. And the gentleman, the gentleman who was doing that was having difficulty. So I just got online and stumbled across you guys and said, hey, these guys have already solved our problem. There's no need for us to worry about it anymore. Let's yeah. just call them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we actually had a process for taking pictures, like I said, about bound shipments. We just yeah. needed to make it way better. And you guys, your product did that for us. So we just gave up all development, bought tablets, and signed up with you guys. Fantastic, fantastic. That's great. I mean, um, you know, the, the feeling that when you, you know, looking for something and then it comes, uh, you know, it, it runs into you or you run into it, you know, that's a, that's a great. Yes, it, it's a giant relief when you can go, dude, I do not need to reinvent the wheel. No, no wonder. Okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Um, you know, so so you guys, you know, obviously ran into load proof, and then what did you guys do? You know, how did you, you know, <clears throat> wow, you know, this is what we need to, and and we need to sign up for it. Well, we sent an email. We sent an email, obviously, to uh, inquire as to how it worked. Uh, I don't remember the nice gentleman's name, but uh, he called us back almost immediately. We set up a demonstration. We went through everything, and we said that solves probably ninety five, ninety eight percent of our problems. So. Yeah. We uh, the we said let's go ahead and do it, and we did. And the only thing that we got from you guys, and I think you guys were already in development, is it worked on like Android phones, but it didn't work on Android tablets. Okay. So you guys had to you guys had to spin up a new uh, app for the App Store for us to download the tablet version. And once we did, we were off and running. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. And and from that day on, you've been using it ever since. Yes, and using it continually. It's actually, it's proven so useful that uh, they now use it in the returns department to take pictures of stuff that comes back to us as returns. So when the customer says, you know, why did I only get 90% of the value? Mm -hmm. uh, we can show them the picture and say, well, this is what you sent us. You see that you're missing the original packaging, you're missing the box of screws, you're missing 12 of the 14 parts. We can basically we document any sort of questionable return so that when we don't give full credit, we have full documentation when the customer asks. Perfect. perfect. So to just do a quick step back. What what exactly is the business that you guys are supporting? Obviously, you're supporting from IT perspective, right? Right. So Global Equipment is a company that's been around about 70 years, and what it sells is warehousing supplies. Mm -hmm. So we sell, you know, like swamp coolers or giant fans, pallet jacks, uh, everything in between, you know, gloves to keep your hands clean, gloves so you can grip stuff, heaters for the winter, shrink wrap. If it gets used in a warehousing environment, then Global Equipment sells it. 
Got it, got it. And and you're supporting from an IT perspective, you're providing all the tools that the virus managers, the operators, everybody. I am in yep. I am in charge of all of the IT software that Global uses to ship from their five US and two Canadian DCs. Got so it. the orders come to me from, you know, wherever the salespeople got them, and then I'm in charge of all the software that makes sure they get picked back and shipped and sent to the customers as quickly and nicely as possible. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So, so I mean, you know, this is a different norm. I, normally, I talk to the warehouse managers. You know, those are the people that approach yep. us. And, you know, so, uh, you know, this is an interesting uh, scenario for us because, you know, um, obviously, you guys, uh, you know, from an IT perspective, you have to support your end users. So, um, uh, you know, what are, what are the areas where you guys found the most value? Typically, what we see is, you know, there is an outbound um, scenario, inbound scenario, and then, and then all these people, right? Once there's something goes wrong, there is a claim that was submitted, or there is a chargeback that got issued to us. We spend a lot of time you know, figuring out within the operations team. They, hey, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Who, where did we, you know, drop the ball? Right? They talk about all those things. So, like that, you know, what are some of the areas that you guys, you know, where um, uh, where, where you found the most value or solved the challenges pretty well? Well, the single biggest area for us is our outbound shipments. Yeah. Uh, Probably, we ship, I want to say, about 60% of our product via UPS. The other 40% are all LTL shipments that are, you know, either either floor-loaded or strapped to pallets. Got it. So, it's very important to us to get pictures of those things as they're loaded on the truck. So, like I said, when the pallet shows up and, you know, let's say it was a stack of, you know, pallet jacks and the truck pulls into the uh, receiving customer and they find pallet jacks all over the back of the truck like Legos, mm -hmm. we can call them, they'll call us and tell us that we're horrible because we don't package things correctly, at which point we can actually say, no, here's all the pictures from where we loaded. Mm -hmm. It was the carrier you chose that made the mess. I don't. So that's where it saves us. There's no, you can't argue with pictures. People will try. But you can say, look, when it left the building, see how nice and neat it was packaged and it was all strapped and everything looks good. So if you look like you've got your son's room in the back of that truck, you need to talk to the delivery driver, not us. <laughs> Great example. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that makes sense. So that's outbound. Um, and you also mentioned yep. outbound, right? Um, Yep, we started inbound probably six months ago. Uh, I guess they were having a lot of questions about returns coming in for customers, you know, where a customer would ship back, like I said, primarily what we get back is is kits that are missing some of the parts. You know, the, the customer will send back 14 of 15 parts, but the 15th part is the important part. So we can lay it all out. We can take a picture and say, hey, look, this is what we received from you, you can either send us the 15th part or we'll have to bill you for the missing part and give you credit for that which we received. Yeah, yeah. So is that is that in the partial scenario or it's both partial and LTL scenario? It covers it covers both. Okay. So so that means you're picking, I mean, so picture taking volume increased because you're, you know, initially from the outbound perspective, you're doing only LTL, right? Pictures. Correct. And then we increased it by starting to take pictures of our uh, inbound freight also. Got it. And, 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 and customers look at stuff. Got it. And I know in the e-commerce world, you know, the returns percentage is pretty high. Uh, I don't, it's like, you know, we call e-commerce a necessary evil. Sorry, returns is a necessary evil when we are dealing with e-commerce. And now, you know. The, it is. It does not produce any income. Therefore, nobody wants to pay any attention to it. Exactly, exactly. So I'm just curious, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from your returns perspective, what percentage of returns you guys get and, you know, um, how much, uh, um, you know. I honestly from, don't know. Yeah, I honestly don't know what the percentage of returns is. So much of my job is focused, uh, as you just said, on the outbound, because that's where the money's made. And the, the, the returns is a necessary evil. So nobody's nobody's asked me to go back and look. Okay. I'm sure somebody in customer service or management knows exactly what the percentage is for our returns, but yeah. that's not something I've ever been curious about. Got it. Got it. No worries. I understand. Um, so, so talk about the transformation, right? I mean, how was it before using load proof, and then you guys started using load proof, and how did how did your life change, and what got better, and you know, 
what 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 well, before low that? proof before low proof as i said the, the picture was from a 12 year old piece of technology printing out on a two by four label out of a dymo printer mm-hmm. <laughs> and there were three fixed stations in every dc where you could go to where you could take the picture so you have to picture us preparing let's say somebody ordered enough stuff that they have a full truckload so 26 pallets mm-hmm. and now you've got to picture somebody dragging 26 pallets one at a time over to the workstation taking mm-hmm. a picture mm-hmm. dragging that pallet back getting the second one and then repeating this whole process 26 times mm-hmm. with you guys we have it all on a tablet so once it's all ready to go he just walks along takes pictures of them as they're going on the truck mm-hmm. and he's done There's no walking. There's no moving. You can take pictures right where it's at. The other benefit is since we are not, well, we're supplying the tablets, but since we don't have to set up more printers, more hand scanners and things of that sort, we are only limited by the number of scanners we have. So every DC started with five and they've been so pleased with it. And the volumes increased to such a degree that I believe every DC has added an additional five. Mm -hmm. So we went from an initial five to everybody having 10. Yeah. And there was no additional cost in software, obviously. Yeah. And then it was just the cost of the tablets, which, you know, thank you to Amazon, you can now get any kind of tablet you want for just about any price you're willing to pay. Yep. 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 Okay. So it was very easy to expand and it streamlined the whole process and saved, you know, hours per week in picture taking. Wow. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, you know, would you recommend, you know, when somebody's on the fence, hey, should I use load proof? You know, what what would you recommend load proof? What are your thoughts on that? If I am given the opportunity and somebody says, do you have a solution for this problem? I most heartedly would recommend you guys. I have no problems, no qualms about it. You guys solved, well, like I said, you, you you've solved a lot of stuff and saved us a lot of time. Okay. Okay. And, you know, just a ballpark, right? Just a ballpark, very high level, you know, how much, you know, dollar savings, you know, load proof resulted from wherever you guys were and after you switched to load proof? Uh, you know, that, that's something that I also don't know. Cause I don't know the cost. What is it? The, uh, there's a term for it. Uh, man hours, I think. Labor, labor cost. Yeah labor costs something, man, I don't know. It's a cost per hour per employee. So I don't know that cost. And we didn't do a time study beforehand. But you know, it'd be easy to say that, you know, in every DC, we're saving probably 70 to 80 hours per week. Okay. But which is basically the equivalent of two employees. So whatever two employees costs our company, we save every week just with streamlining the process. Wow, that's, I mean, two employees for a warehouse. I mean, it's a fully loaded. It's at least uh, $25 per hour. That's like $50,000 per year. Yep. It, it's a it's a very significant savings for us for a minimal investment. Okay, got it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Awesome. I mean, no, this is great. You know, I will stop recording this video and then we'll start the second recording. Um, 